No matter how productive you've been in the past, sometimes it can be difficult to muster the energy to start working on a big project, stick with a new habit, or tackle a massive to-do list. While no one is immune from procrastination, there is one really simple way to trick your brain into pushing past the inertia that most of us feel at the beginning of a really difficult task. In this video, I wanna introduce you to the five minute rule, why it works and how you can use it to finally get started on the things that you've been avoiding. This portion of my video is brought to you by Google. October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and so I've teamed up with Google to help you protect your accounts from the biggest online security threats. And no, it's not hackers in ski masks. Believe it or not, it's bad passwords. I've been there before. You pick out a password that's easy to remember. Maybe it's your mother's maiden name, street address, or Skater Boy 8. Yes, that's with the number eight. And then you proceed to use it across every single platform. The problem, those details aren't difficult to guess and your passwords are your last line of defense for all of your important accounts from your bank to your email. Thankfully, Google Password Manager has you covered. It's the safe and easy way to create, securely save and fill in passwords for all of your accounts. Even better, Google Password Manager now offers a new feature to check if your saved passwords have been exposed to any recent public data breaches. If I know you like I think I do, you've been procrastinating changing your passwords for a really long time. But trust me, it's not nearly as painful as it sounds. Click the link in the description below to learn more about how to keep your account secure with Google. Thanks to Google for sponsoring this portion of my video. Before we get to what the five minute rule is and why it's so effective, we need to first take a step back to understand why it seems like we're wired for failure in the first place. People hate being uncomfortable. So we've evolved powerful systems to take over when we feel threatened, anxious, or when we're in imminent danger. You know, so we don't die. Touch a hot stove, you pull away without even thinking about it. Hear a siren, you flinch and cover your ears. See something that looks like a tiger? Your heart starts racing and you get ready to make a run for it. It doesn't matter that it's just a guy in a tiger print t-shirt. Your body doesn't need much of an excuse to pull the ripcord. You know this as the fight or flight response. And while this is a really great way to not die, it wasn't exactly designed for the mental and emotional pain that we're often faced with in the modern world. Unfortunately, thanks to millions of years of evolution, this is the operating system that we're given when we're born. To your limbic system, the anxiety you feel at the thought of giving a big presentation is the exact same as the panic you experience when a spider the size of a guinea pig tries to take a shower with you. <laughs> Any perceived threat, from monstrous spiders to looming deadlines, triggers that rush of adrenaline and cortisol that activates your body's most powerful defense systems. And once that red alert goes off, your body will do almost anything to prevent itself from being in harm's way. And believe it or not, this is where procrastination comes in. In their book, Switch, How to Change Things When Change is Hard, Chip and Dan Heath explain that procrastination is the result of the conflict between the emotional and logical sides of our brains. In a nutshell, the emotional side of our brain is always looking for comfort and reassurance. So it wants to avoid difficult tasks that don't offer an immediate reward. This side of your brain is why you can't seem to go for a run in the morning, even though you downloaded a sweet playlist. The other side of your brain, the rational side, is great at long-term planning. While this might seem perfect for tackling difficult projects, this side can get spun out overthinking things if a task seems too complicated. It's paralysis by analysis. So how do you outsmart your brain's big red panic button when you know you have to get something done? The answer is almost offensively simple. Lower the stakes. Writing a novel can take years of rewrites. Training to run a marathon takes months of practice. Even making a 15 minute YouTube video can take weeks. It's no wonder we don't wanna get started on stuff like this when the amount of time and energy that we have to put in is so high. So make things easier for yourself. Instead of sitting down to do something that gives you the squirmies, and yes, that's a technical term, promise your brain that you're only gonna work on a very small but specific part of a task for five minutes, just five minutes. Once the five minutes is up, you're free to do something else, anything else, even if it's not work-related. Let me ask you a question. Which of these sounds more doable? Build a successful YouTube channel that pulls in hundreds of thousands of views per month, or spend five minutes coming up with new video ideas for your channel. Which would be easier to get started and easier to complete? 
I mean, five minutes is so painless, it's hard not to do. Some of you are skeptical of this idea, I'm sure. I mean, how can five minutes, just sitting down to work on a project for five minutes, affect the outcome of a really big project that might take months to complete? And the answer is that you never really stop working for just five minutes. According to Instagram's founder and CEO, Kevin Systrom, the five minute rule is his secret to fighting procrastination. If you don't wanna do something, make a deal with yourself to do at least five minutes of it. After five minutes, you'll end up doing the whole thing. And that's because the five minute rule tackles procrastination at its root, friction. When you set these tiny, reasonable limits, your fight or flight response doesn't see the task as a threat and your body relaxes. And that's where the magic happens, because the most effective part of the five minute rule is the fact that our brains actually don't mind hard work. We just don't like the idea of it. Once we start something, it's amazing how quickly our brains shift into gear. We quickly move past the fear and friction that have been holding us back, and we build momentum. And that's because it turns out our brains are also really good at rewarding us for solving problems. It feels really good to finish something difficult, to master a new skill, or tick an item off your to-do list. You might have been dreading getting started, but once you dig in, it's not at all what you made it out to be. With each little win of a project and every step towards a big goal, your brain's reward centers kick in and light up with serotonin, dopamine, and other chemicals to keep you motivated. You may have only planned to work for five minutes, but that little push was all you needed to switch your brain over from sleep mode to full speed. It turns out that millions of years of evolution is no match for a timer. And so pull out your phones, set your timer for five minutes, and see how much progress you can make today. And you might wanna do it before your brain catches on.